G'day and welcome to the Tech Math Channel. I'm Josh. Today I'm going to push the boundaries of reality. I'm going to turn math into magic. To do this, I'm going to need you to get close to the screen that you're watching this through. It's important that you can actually touch the screen because you are going to feel and experience something totally amazing. In a moment, I'm going to get you to place your finger right here on the 12 and then move around the face of the clock from number to number using totally random choices. And even though you're there and I'm here through the power of maths, I'm going to know exactly where your finger is. Okay, so here goes. I want you to clear your thoughts and think of any number on the clock face from one to 12. It's your choice. Now I have no idea what number you're thinking of, but in a moment I'm going to get you to spell out your secret number, letter by letter, moving your finger clockwise around the numbers. For example, if your secret number is five, starting on 12, you're going to spell the word five, F-I-V-E ending up on the number four. On the other hand, if your secret number was seven, you'll spell the word seven. So starting on 12, S-E-V-E-N, and you'll end up on the number five. So place your finger on the number 12 and spell out your secret number right now. Awesome. Now what I want you to do is I want you to spell the number that's under your finger using one position, one number for each letter. And if you need to keep going around the clock, you hit 12, just keep going your way around. So if your finger had been on the number four, you will spell out the number four, F-O-U-R. Or if your finger had been on the number three, you will spell out the number three, T-H-R-E-E. -E. You get what I'm down there. Okay, and your finger will end up on a new number. So spell out your number right now. Awesome. And now for a third time, once again, what I want you to do is I want you to spell the number that's under your finger using one position for each letter, stopping on the last letter and keep your finger there. So if your finger had been on the seven, you'll spell the word seven, S-E-V-E-N. So spell out your number right now. So now you should have done that. Now I know that your finger is not on the number three, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I know your finger isn't on the six or on the four. So I'll get rid of those guys too. Also, the 12, it can go. Okay, one last time. I'm gonna get you to spell the number under your finger. One position for each letter, skipping the empty spaces. So if your finger is on the number five, you'll spell the word five, F-I-V-E, -E, skipping that empty space where the six was. So spell out your number right now. Okay, you should have done that by now. Now I know that you're not on the number nine, or the number 11, or the number two. Now I want to remind you I had no idea what your initial secret number was, or how many numbers each letter has, or the number of moves you made. Everything has been totally random. And there is no way that I could know what number your finger is on. But right now, through power beyond explanation, I'm going to tell you what number your finger is touching. So keep your finger really still, stay quiet. You are on, the number, the number seven. Wow, that's pretty crazy, right? Sometimes I even amaze myself. You've just seen real magic, real sorcery. Ah, oh, you know I'm gonna break it to you. It's, it's, it's actually maths, okay? What you've just seen is a math trick dressed up to look like magic. It's the magic of the Kruskal count, a mathematical effect that has been known to perplex professional magicians because it is not based on sleight of hand, it's just a mathematical phenomenon. So what's going on? Basically, the secret is how the words 1 through 12 in English end up pointing at each other on their way around the clock face until they end up on the same value. Pretty much a nice way of saying their paths converge. So let me show you how this works. I've got the clock here and all the numbers are back on it. The first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to put how many letters are in each word. So 1 has 3 letters, 2 has 3 letters, 3 has 5 letters, 4 has 4 letters, 5 has 4 letters, 6 has 3 letters, 7 has 5 letters, 8 has 5 letters, 9 has 4 letters, 10 has 3 letters, 11 has 6 letters, and 12 has 6 letters. So as you can see, we have a number of different words, but they all have the following word lengths. They're either 3 letters, 4 letters, 5 letters, or 6 letters. So let's see how this affects us. So let's first off look at the 3 letter words here. The 3 letter words, if you were to start on the 12, they could be something like one or two or 10. You would count them, okay? So you would go one, two, three, and you would end up just here on the three. 
Now what would happen is you would count from three, and three is a five-letter word. You would end up one, two, three, four, five letters in. You would end up on the eight. The eight's a five-letter word, and you would end up on the one for that third part there. And this is where you would end up. So what about the four-letter words? Okay, so we have four-letter words. They could be four or five or nine. So we first off count from the 12 here, one, two, three, four, and we end up at the four here. All right, so now we're going to count four as a four-letter word. We're going to count four letters, one, two, three, four. You can see that we end up on the eight. And as we know, with the eight, we're going to count five letters and also end up on the one. So what about some five-letter words? Now, the five-letter words, we could have three, we could have seven, we could have eight. So first off, we start on 12 and we count that five, one, two, three, four, five, and we end up on a five there. Then we count four, okay, because five's a four-letter word, one, two, three, four, we end up on nine, and nine is a four-letter word, so we end up one, two, three, four, we also end up on the one here. All right, so last of all, this leaves us six-letter words. So let's have a look at six-letter words, and that's going to be the 11 or the 12 here. So we spell those out, and that's going to take us to the number six here. Six is a three-letter word, one, two, three, and it's also going to take us to nine here, as we saw before what happened with the five-letter words, and that's then going to take us also to the one. So what's happening here, as you can see, is these paths are converging on one another. And it doesn't really matter. At that stage, you know, I said, okay, I'm going to take away this number and that number and that number. But at that stage, it didn't really matter. You do this three times, you're all going to end up on the same number. But the trick is to make it look like it's a little bit random. This was a trick that was used by different magicians. And, you know, it looked quite amazing when it was done. But it is just the Kruskal count. And it's one of those really, really strange things I really recommend you have a look up. It shows how paths converge. And things that seemingly are random are actually not random at all. They end up pushing onto one another. Anyway, hopefully you like that particular video. And hopefully you like this particular trick. It's a pretty cool one, right? Makes it look like it's magic, but it's just maths. Anyway, thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time.